Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to our Filipino cooking class. Um, thank you all for coming today. My name is Fides. I'll be one of three consultants who will be showing you some of our favorite Filip Filipino um, food dishes today. Um, today, it's all about um, merienda food. Merienda is a Spanish-derived Filipino food that means snacks, anything you have in between meals, in short, um, tea. So, um, yeah, um, Filipino food um, is probably not as popular as um, other Asian cuisines. Um, yeah, but I may be biased because um, Filipino, but there are a lot of Filipino dishes that will, um, you will love once you've tasted it. So it's generally simple, but it's delicious. It's comforting. And for me, it's um, familiar. So um, yeah, I mean, if you've tried like any other Filipino dishes before, and if there's something um, that you like or is now your favorite, um, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, we'd love to know um, what it is um, that you like. So Filipino food is like a like a mashup of different types of food, um, generally because of our history. So we have like Spanish influences, Chinese influences, um, I don't know, like tiny bit American maybe as well. Um, and a lot of like Southeast Asian vibe, like rice, coconut milk, um, all the stuff um, as well. But yeah, so before we start, I would like to introduce you to my two other co-hosts today. So Maricel um, is here and Maricel loves to do a lot of um, Filipino foods in her thermomix. So she converts um, a lot of them. And we have Miss Candice um, is joining us as well. So Miss Candice has been traveling um, during the lockdown. Very lucky. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah, and today she'll be doing um, Filipino uh, cuisine with us too. Hello girls, excited um, to do it today with excited you. Excited and nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Very nervous. Um, all right, so um, I guess we can start cooking because we have a few um, dishes we'll show you um, today. So I'll start um, with, I'm just waking up my Thermomix. And I'm going to start with um, ginataang mais. So ginataang mais is like literally translated corn in coconut milk. But it also has um, rice on it. So it's more like a, a rice pudding with corn. And today we're going, I'm going to do like a little bit of twist to the traditional way of cooking it. And I'm going to show you um, what's that in a while. So it's not on cookie dough because, um, yeah, there's not a lot of Filipino food in cookie dough. So I'm going to show you like a manual process um, for now. Don't worry about the measurements. I'm just gonna show you the steps because after um, after the after the meeting, we're going to send you like all the links and the recipes for everything that we do today. So let's get started. All right, so first, um, yeah, so I mentioned we're going to do something um, a little bit different with Yinata and Maiz. Um, we're, I, I'm going to add um, cereal milk just to add a little bit of corn flavor on it. Something I learned like watching YouTube videos, um, there was like a Filipino celebrity who's done this um, using like the traditional um, method without the thermomix, so a little bit harder than um, when you have a thermomix. So what we need to do is first, we have to steep some cornflakes into um, the milk and the coconut uh, milk mi mixture. So I'll be using um, two bowls um, when cooking, but if you don't have a spare bowl, you can get like a large um, bowl and uh, steep or jug and steep your cornflakes in there. So first, I'm going to put cornflakes. Then 
um, coconut, fresh milk. Like having breakfast and, in the afternoon. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> definitely breakfast all day. <laughs> um, condensed milk, yes. And the coconut milk. So tiny one. What else do we need to put in there? I think that's it. And we'll just let it steep for like 20 minutes or so. So while that one is steeping, steeping, is that a word? <laughs> um, I'm going to make, we're going to cook the rice. I'll just grab my other bowl. Mm -hmm. So for this one, we need um, sticky rice or glutinous rice. So it's not like your jasmine rice that you usually find in the shops. It's the different kind because when it cooks, it's a bit um, sticky. And I'm not sure if you can see it, probably not. Um, but if you look at it, it's more opaque um, white in color than your regular jasmine rice or basmati rice. So I'll just pop this on there. Add water. And just um, cook this for about 20 minutes until the rice, um, it's called like blooming like when starting to open up and be really soft. So I'll just put in 20 minutes. Oops, not yet. A uh, hundred. And it needs to be reverse and the slowest um, speed. So spoon speed. Otherwise you're just end up like pureeing your rice if that makes sense. So that's it. Um, so we have this one and this one, and we'll come back after 20 minutes for the next step. For the meantime, we're going to go to Marcel. She's going to show us one of um, her recipes that she's doing today. Yep. Um, hello, everyone. As Peter said, I'm Marcel. So I've been a consultant for a year now and I kind of enjoying it. So I started as a customer two years and then I tried to um, earn TM6 at some point. So, okay, I'm gonna do a, actually it's a Filipino uh, um, version of the coronation chicken sandwich filling. And um, basically, um, for us, it's just really steamed chicken, salt and pepper, and uh, and mayonnaise. So basically, for the mayonnaise, you can always um, I don't know if you, if has anyone tried uh, making mayonnaise out of uh, Thermomix or uh, cookie dough recipe? It's pretty good. It's like a Japanese mayo um, effect. So we just we like it, not so sour. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I've already set my thermomix basically to, to cook today. So that's a coronation chicken sandwich filling. And just for your information, every cookie dough recipe has its, uh, you know, like difficulty, total time and the serving, um, um, serving portion and the ingredients, preparation and, um, and nutritional value. So anyone has, a, anyone has a, you know, like allergies and so on. So that's something that you can filter. And for TM6 owners or uh, Thermomix user, do you know that out of the preparation, you can just jump in to a certain, say, say number two or number three number process, and you can start from there, especially when you stop your, your cooking. So as I've said, um, I'm just going to start cooking, um, but because of time, I already done the thinning of the, of the uh, chicken. 
Um, so basically, I will just press next, next, next um, until, um, so 500 grams of chicken. Um, they have extensions. Uh, it has to steam for 25 minutes, so I thought I can just ignore that. It's just using Varoma. Uh, this part and place the reserve cooked chicken. And again, at the end of the day, you are the chef. So I like to um, I like to put in all my uh, my um, say the salt and pepper right away, so that when I mince it, it's already there, incorporated already. Um, so it says place it the um, reserved chicken and. It's that one. So basically you can see that I've already added salt and pepper so that I can ignore that process later. So here you go. And it's so easy to, um, to shred the chicken. So there you go. And then insert measuring cup. I don't have my measuring cup. And the lid, there you go. And it is 10 seconds. And again, because this is a um, guided uh, recipe, um, it's already preset for you. So it says 10 seconds reverse function. Um, because it's 500 grams, but I only have like 250 or 260 worth of chicken, I will basically lessen the, um, the, the timing so that um, it doesn't get... Um, Oh, means yeah so okay so i'll just turn the knob to four and it will spreading the chicken okay so i think i said it for okay and then this is a transfer and set aside probably i'll just show you how it looks like it's tightly shredded it's not like means yeah, so, and again, because um, I am, it's a simple way of doing for Filipino chicken mayo, I will go to the recipe details and going back, as I've said, you can jump in and skip some process. So I, that's what I'm doing now. Um, so I'm gonna do, add, um, so say add 250 of mayo, again, because I'm doing just half recipe, I will probably just put um, 120 to 130 grams of, um, of mayonnaise. So 60, 70. And the good thing with, um, the good thing with, um, with TM6, and that's the difference between TM6 and TM5 for someone who wants to upgrade, is basically uh, consistency wise is one gram rather than five grams. So very important for someone doing the baking. Okay, so I will just, and then uh, next, uh, the research chicken. I am skipping some of the, um, of the say curry powder, um, turmeric, because again, I'm not where it's very simple for us. Um, so salt and salt and pepper. If you notice, I've already added earlier. Um, pepper, I've done it, and it will just mix it. Um, again, thirty seconds. I am just gonna mix it for um, ten seconds. Um, because it's just very little um, a half recipe that I'm doing. Cool. And it's done. So basically, it's there. It's done. Um, next. And it's it's done. So basically, I'll just have to show you later, like the um, the output or presentation during the plating. Um, who's next? I think back to you, Fides. Is it? Yeah, I'll just spotlight myself a bit so if I can find myself. Uh, where am I? Okay. Yes. 
uh, technology, sorry. There. Okay. All right. So um, this one's not yet done. It's still about got about like 12 minutes to go. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll just start on a different recipe. So um, for your, my next recipe, I'll be showing you langka jam. I'm not sure if you've heard it, of it in English. It's called jackfruit. Jackfruit. Um, yeah. So yeah, so it's it's this like massive fruit that has spikes on the outside, and um, we usually, I mean, we cook it whether it's like young and unripe or um, or ripe. So when it's um, young, we cook it like a vegetable. So um, it's a savory dish. We just add it to, we, we add like coconut milk again <laughs> um, and some like dried fish or prawn for um, added taste. But today I'm going to show you like a dessert, a sweet um, version out of it. So um, just quickly show you what it looks like. So the fruit is actually like, um, golden, orange, yellow-ish, and it's a massive fruit, but when you open it and when it's ripe, it has like a lot of like tiny pods, um, like this one. Um, this one, I got it frozen from the Asian shops because we don't obviously have um, the fruit here in Australia. Um, they so probably have it like see that somebody gave me a, a seedling of the jackfruit. So it's just a matter oh, of uh, are you growing? Yeah. Are you well, growing? I don't it? know if it's also right. Let's see how I let you know. Yeah. So it's it's um yeah, so it's it has a very sweet smell when it's ripe. And making it into jam, because it's a very big fruit, it's it just makes sense to make it into a jam. So what I did is I just chop it up into like tiny bits. Um, when, or some people, they actually like shred it by hand, um, until you have like strips of it, but I find like sometimes when you're like stripping it like that, it's, it's long. And when it's cooked as a jam, it becomes very soft and stringy. So, um, sometimes it gets stuck in your throat and it's not like a very pleasant feeling. So I rather like chop it into like smaller bits like this. So to make it into a jam, it's very, very simple. Um, you just um, get your um, shredded or chop, whatever, uh, cut. <laughs> cut langka or jackfruit in your bowl. Add Add some sugar. Can you use palm sugar? Yes, that would be even better because it would have um, like more caramel taste yep. from it. So this is brown sugar and raw sugar mixed together. But I don't know, like depends on what sugar you have. I mean, you can use practically any kind um, of sugar. It's just that if you use brown sugar, it will turn out darker in color when it's done so i've mixed like raw and brown sugar um in here and water so just three ingredients and usually like without the thermal mix you would have to stand over the stove until everything is done but i'm just gonna pop it in there cook it for like 20 minutes, Varoma, and again, spoon, um, speed, reverse, because we don't want to chop up the jackfruit, because it will become very, very soft when it's cooked. And in, and we want some, some of that water to evaporate, so I'm going to put the basket on top, and that's it. Easy as, um, easiest jam recipe you'll ever make so it's going to become very fragrant when it starts to cook but my kids don't really like the smell <laughs> so um if i want to flush out my kids from the house i cook this one so they'll go outside and play all right so that one is starting this one is still cooking 
and then maybe we can go to Candice. So yes. she can show us one of her recipes. I'll just spotlight you and I'll remove myself. There we go. Hello, everybody. Oh, God, well, Candice is whipped off, as yes, you know. The other week she was in Spain. Now she's, yeah. on, she's in the Philippines. Isn't it amazing how both dishes are actually, well, both countries almost related, a bit of Spanish and a bit of Philippines. Well, what's Candice going to cook for you today? She's going to whip up a little bit of a leche flan. <laughs> so, but what's a leche flan? It's a Spanish flan, but... Oh, you know what Candice is like? She always twists it around a little bit. You know? It's supposed to be this great big huge thing, but it's not good for Candice's waist. So instead, she's going to make some little individual ones. But she did have to do a little bit of pre-doing because she wants to stand on the stove melting some sugar. So as you know, Candice always takes the filters off of everything. And if you look, Google your Spanish flan, it's a little bit like a creme caramel but the Spanish and the Argentinians and the Philippines, they all like everything so sweet. So it's full of sugar. So That's right. I've done a little bit of a pre-do. So she's whipped up in these gorgeous little eco bowls you can actually get on the next shop. They're fabulous. Made of bamboo. And she's actually melted the caramel in the bottom. See that? Look at that. Sticky and sweet, just like Candice. So the next part's nice and easy. It all comes in a can. Don't we all love shopping in cans? Go to the recycle bin. So nice and easy. I'm loving joining the girls because you know what Candice like. She loves a bit of a collaboration. So we've made, we've done the sugar, we've done the caramelizing. Oh, and I was, actually, Candace bought one of these. And any of those are using gloves, and you can't touch your blooming screen like Candace can't. Look, you just touch it, and it moves. Amazing, I don't have to touch it like 10 times like I normally do. Right, okay, so we've got to get some little googies. Uh, the girls are busy out at back laying eggs. No, they weren't. Came from the supermarket. Just going to pop three little eggies in there. No, it's cancelled. I should just throw them in there. Oh. How's everybody out there? We're all finally sort of like out of lockdown almost, aren't we? We can. Almost tour Australia. Actually, no, we can go to sea before we can tour Australia. There we go. Going to throw three little eggies in there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. This dish is nice and easy. And for those who love a little bit of sweetness, we've got a little bit of condensed milk. I was a bit lazy and I did actually take a lid off because I do have trouble. And I'm having fun with this new wig because it's actually got Loose strands going in my mouth. So, nice can of condensed milk. Now, I'm making these into little individual ones um, for you. And it's all about steaming. And you know what can is like? She's not using that varoma. Now, that thing that collects dust. You don't like dust. You don't like dust, do you, Sharon and Colin? Right. Next, some evaporated milk. Now you can twist this recipe around and add a little bit of zing to it, to which I did with one the other night. And I actually peeled an orange, literally with a peeler, and I actually popped it in and infused it into the flavours of this. And then what I did was actually, as I had the... Um, caramel sitting in the bowl, I actually put the orange peel in the top of it. Gave it a little bit of texture, a little bit of colour. That's all about. One goes out lit, 10 seconds speed for. How's your name? Why be that? Love a little bit of jiggle. Not a cocktail though, huh? It's unusual for Candice not to make a cocktail, isn't it? Ooh, right. So this is nice and easy. There you go. All mixed. Ten seconds. There you go. Beautifully done. And 
We're going to quickly pop it through the sieve, which I have and I've lost it again. Here we go. Right, straight over the top. So these are going to steam instead of actually doing a bit like a panna cotta that you would actually either bake or set. Um, I did make some of these ahead because if you stand there waiting, you haven't got six hours to stand there waiting for Candice to cook a meal. You might stand there waiting six hours for to have a cocktail, but definitely not for a dessert. So we strain those but over the, the top. Of it, um, you can prepare it like two days ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have a Rome rip. Now it does say you actually put sticks at the bottom, but if you want, you can actually get these beauties and you just pop them in the bottom of your Varoma. And we need... There we go. We want 750 mils of water. So I'm just going to get a second bowl. And here you these that don't really know. Have you looked at the special this month? <gasps> $29! Not 374, 29. So if you haven't got yourself a tea and six and you want another bowl, which you always do need another bowl, grab on there, get on there because it goes till the 2nd of December or while drop the glass. And don't ring us up and say, oh, I missed out. It's like going to Big W on Christmas Eve going, you want a great big Lego set and they go, we've sold out. It's your own fault. So get onto your consultant and order yourself one. Ken's going to pop the lid on. We're going to pop the little Verona on the top. And we're going to throw the little bowls in. Beautiful bamboo bowls. Oh, your dessert's going to be fabulous. Stretch Candace's COVID curve. But since she's been back at work chopping hair, she's managed to lose a couple of kilos. So I guess it's a good excuse to pop a few more on. So we've added the water, 750 grams. We've popped that on top. And we've got that underneath. Just going to pop a little bit of baking paper over the top and a little bit of tin foil. Now, when you do this, make sure that you try and push your foil down. Because as it's steaming, the water is going to be coming up the top and it's got to go down somewhere. And you want it to run back into the bottom of your bowl. Pop your little lid on. Like so, and there goes your flying saucer. Candice loves the aroma. Now, 40 minutes. Now, that's for a big flan. Now, I did do a little take on this yesterday, as I said, and I felt they were a little bit overcooked. So I'm actually going to drop these back down to 30 minutes. Of course, it's guided cooking. Still remember, you can override. Just because it says to do so doesn't mean you have to. You know, Candice likes it or not doing whatever she's told. Never. Right, so we're on the aroma. And we're going to speed one and we go for 30 minutes. And there we go. Look at that. So, as I said, you can pop them in these little dishes here, or you can get the little Dariol molds. They're silicon. Oh, actually, there's some in this one. We did taste this. Oh, so much fun with gloves. There we go. Fabulous. So, she's not going to show you just yet. We'll just wait for the bing bong to go off. And then you can see. Look at that exciting. Look at that, Candice. She's gone from Spain to the Philippines. All like just atomized again. And oh, I guess you better hand it over to the girls because it's their show, not mine. <laughs> That's awesome, Candice. Thank you. My pleasure. It's actually my favorite dessert. And I think a lot, a lot of Filipinos um, love that chip line as well. They just have it all the time. Not that it's, uh, it's really funny because the one I had last night's gone straight to this hip. You can actually see yes, the curve. That's right. <laughs> it's not the healthiest dessert, but like uh. yeah, anyway. <laughs> um all right. condensed milk uh, recipes available in Cookie Do as well. It sure is. And yes. um you can uh, you can um basically adjust the sugar if you like. Yes. <laughs> All right, so is it okay? So I'll be next. Um, this the rice has finished cooking, so it should be like rice. 
Right, but a bit um, sticky in consistency compared to if you're just um, using your regular jasmine rice. Um, so in here, I'm going to add the corn because we need to cook the corn um, a bit before adding the rest of the milk mixture that we made earlier. So um, I used fresh corn because um, fresh always better, but uh, if you don't have access to fresh corn, you can use the corn in the can. Um, I think it's called whole kernel or something. Um, yeah, so this one I just like sliced through to get all the ears out. And I'm just going to pop that in here, cook it for maybe like five more um, minutes, 100 degrees, um, spoon speed, before we put the, um, the other one, the cereal milk that we made earlier. So five more minutes on here. Hundred speed one uh, speed spoon on reverse, and then we'll come back um, a bit later. We'll go to Maricel because she'll be um, showing you how to make puchinta, a Filipino rice rice cake. I think. <laughs> um, all right, I'll just and spotlight me. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I will just have to pop in. So I've uploaded the recipe in the um, in the uh, recipe community. If uh, FYI, recipe community is actually um, owned by Thermomix Australia. And basically this is where um, Thermomix users are sharing the recipe. Um, it hasn't been tested in the uh, Thermomix kitchen, but I guess the happy owners of Thermomix basically are happy to share their recipe. And um, especially for us, for Filipinos, um, um, I think it's quite just handful of the recipes that are available in, in uh, Cookie Do. So it's kind of very um, um, handy for me to just um, find some similar recipe in, uh, in Cookie D or recipe community and do my own conversion, yeah. Okay, so what is um, conchita? Conchita is actually, is like a, um, a rice cake, put it that way, um, in, in the Philippines. And we have maybe thousands kind of rice cake that we do and we love it. And I think somebody comment that also are uh, quite sweet uh, meals because we are doing merienda. So it's like a, a, a merienda, like a, like tea break. And we like siesta. So in the afternoon, we just sit down and chat with family and friends. Okay. Um, okay, so it's called Kuchinta. And because again, it's not available in um, Cookie Do or um, in recipe community, I will do it on manual. So this is a manual um, cooking. Let me just bring in my, my recipe on my screen so that it will be easier. And again, at what Fide said, I'm not gonna um, say everything, the, um, all the, uh, all the uh, ingredients because uh, you can you can access in community recipe and Fides will send the links anyway. Um, so basically, it says um, place the sugar, brown sugar, um, into the thermomix to melt it. So that's um, hundred. Oh. Let me do a scale. So that's. Um, I think 180, so 175. Oh, sorry, I think my screen is not on. Let me just. Uh, oh, sorry, I can do that my for screen. you. 
that my video so that you can see my screen as well. Okay, so around 180. Um, and then I'm gonna mill it for 10 seconds. Ten seconds and speed nine. It's like making your own um, icing sugar. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see the. Uh, because it's completely milled. It's really like icing sugar. <coughs> okay. And then um, after milling, so just add all the dried ingredients. So it's like the glutinous rice and uh, ashwete. So I think it's called uh, anato seed or anato, uh, anato powder. Um, um, so I've already like pre-mixed it. Um, and then I'm just gonna add it. So that's around, I think 250, around 250 mark. Let me just find my cheat sheet uh, thingy. And add uh, 450 grams of water. Don't you just love how you can flip between those screens? Yep. Yeah. And having the mesh, uh, the, oh. the scale as well is so handy. Okay, and then, um, and I was just gonna mix it. Uh, Filipino dishes, we tend to mix so much. So without standing in your of, uh, on your um, cook uh, gas range or cooking range is pretty really handy for us. So, so that's uh, I'm gonna um, mix it for uh, how much? Um, four seconds. Uh, speed ten. Alternatively, you can use the turbo function. So I'm just gonna turbo function twice because it's uh, two seconds each. Um, and then it says just transfer to a bowl. Um, and then um, I've got the I've got the bowl. Um, oops, done. Okay. They so transfer to a bowl, which I'm going to transfer in here. And I've got the, I've got the uh, puto molder, um, which I already sprayed with oil so that it doesn't stick on it. And I will have to steam it um, for, um, for about maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Hold on, let me just um, transfer this. And by the way, um, aside from um, can be said of the uh, BBL set of $29, um, 36 uh, interest free option is also available, uh, which is really $17 per week. And you can have your Thermomix in your bench top right away. Yep. And while I'm getting the bowl, and it says they are um, basically, um, you got to steam it. So for me, just again, to save some time, I will put boiled water so that I don't have to um, um, boil too long. I'll wait for the cooking time. Uh, I'll wait for, uh, for, for more cooking time. Oops, sorry. So I'm just going to set my Thermomix 20 minutes because I think I will have two batches and um, 
I will set into a Varoma and speed uh, four. But for the time being, I will, uh, let me just, I don't know if you can see, let me just put my screen down. So that's the, we call it the Puto Molder. So it's just really a plastic uh, uh, that we can just put in. Um, and just the capacity wise, just put like three fourths so that doesn't uh, um, overflow. Yeah, not sure if you can see. So that's basically, that's what I've got. And another tip that I can, sh I can tell you. So if you want to have a different flavors, so we like, um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a, uh, um, a purple yam. So we call it ube or taro for Vietnamese. They call it for Vietnamese taro or other Asian country. But for us, the purple yam is the ube, which is slightly different, but it's, in a, it's like a sweet potato, put it that way. Yeah. So, and so there you go. Hold on, let me just add the boiling, that's the boiling water. So I think about one liter. Uh, there's a marking a bowl of one liter. So I'm just gonna do, follow the one liter mark and add the water. Okay. And then add my lid, Varoma. Yep. And I will arrange it. So I think I can fill in. When I did the testing, I think I was able to put um, maybe 10, but I'm only doing six because I wanted to make other flavors, sorry, other flavors, which I will show you while I am still. So it's Varoma, 20 minutes and speed one. So if you see the screen, it says 75 degrees. So while it hits the varoma beans, is the steaming function is working. Um, okay, hold on. Yeah. Um, we have, I don't know if you've heard pandan. So it's a green leaf, very aromatic, and um, we love it. <laughs> um, so that's the pand oops, pandan flavor, and I have the ube flavor. So all I need to do is basically half this um, have this um, um, and I will just have to add um, maybe half, maybe less than, less than half this spoon. So maybe one foot and just mix it and to have that um, pandan flavor. So I'm just gonna, I just added, I don't know, can you see it's color green? And you can, again, you can get this um, pandan flavor in Asian shops. Um, our, our rice cake, mostly our desserts, are actually very similar to Malaysian, uh, Malaysian, Vietnamese, and um, Thai. The girls, I've just popped in the chat. Come on, yep. pop it in the chat where we'd like to go to next. Give us another country where you'd like to see all three of us present from. Can I put Not in America. We don't want hot dogs. <laughs> I would love to go to Singapore. Oh, I... Yes. Yeah. Um, we actually... We lived in Singapore for 10 years. That's why, um, I don't know if, I mean, feel free to drop into my Facebook page and I cook a lot of Malaysian and Singapore dishes as well. Um, yeah, especially the Hainanese chicken, um, what else? Uh, 
the noodle stuff, laksa. Okay. <laughs> um, so I think for memory, in Malaysia, they don't eat beef, do they? It's only pork Sorry? and chicken. Um, some, I think chicken they do. And pork. A bit. Yeah, they don't eat pork, but I think they have beef. Um, well, but think about they eat we they eat a lot of um of pork, but it's just for Malaysian. It's it's actually more of because a lot of Malaysian Chinese so they eat pork, but for the uh, Muslim Malaysian no, and the Malaysian India. Okay. They also don't. Yeah. 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 So I'm doing the uh the purple, which is the uh, ube flavor. And I'm just gonna, I just mix it and make, uh, you know, um, and I will just add in into my, into my, uh, into my uh, thinning. And I will show you later uh, the plating or the output afterwards. So back to you, Fides. And by the way, if you have any question or just pop in the chat and we'll try to answer as much as we can. Back to you, Fides. All right, let me just spotlight myself back. Um, hang on one second. All right, so corn, uh, hot. <laughs> The corn and rice um, have finished cooking. Oh, what happened? Sorry, so, sorry, one sec. Um, oh. Sorry. Uh, can you start your video again? Okay, let me do it. Just, all right. Okay, there you go. So corn and rice has cooked. And we're going to do the, um, add the cereal milk or all the milk mixture. So um, if you don't have the second bowl, see how it's so handy. <laughs> um, you have to take this one out first, transfer it to um, another bowl because we need to um, blend um, now that the, the corn flakes has seeped into the milk. So just to get more flavor out of it, we're going to have to blend it. You can strain it if you don't want the cornflakes on it, but I, I found that it adds um, a very interesting flavor. So I leave it there. I, I, I just um, blend it for like um, speed nine, like 10, 20 seconds to get it like really fine. So you don't um, have that um, yeah, cornflake, um, big chunks of cornflake in there. So I'll just put it there now. Very handy. You, uh, if you're thinking of upgrading, uh, um, if you're thinking of upgrading, just it's just $29. Huh? It's so good. So that's, um, I'll just okay. I'm take a long off there. Um, Marcel, I'll just need. You oh. um, a bit? Sorry. <laughs> um, yes. And 30 seconds, speed 8.5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, it's exhausting now. Oh, oh. 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 It's cocktail. And it Oh, good. And then breakfast with this one. I'll just add it in. And we'll cook it for a little bit more just to mix in everything. So now um, that's done on top of the rice, is that right? Yes, yeah, so the rice and the corn, and now you have all the milk 
coconut milk, condensed milk, fresh milk. I'll That's just not breakfast, lunch, and dinner in one bowl. <laughs> yes, cook it okay, um, eat in the morning, the and then you can have it for the whole day. You have vegetables on it as well, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, oh, just put alcohol in that and can be fine. <laughs> That's right. Um, you can add sugar if you like. Um, the condensed milk we didn't put a lot. It's 150 grams. Um, you can add a little bit more sugar, like maybe 50 grams. But I mean, like, try to taste it and see if you want to add more or not. I'll just add a bit. because sweet we love sweet and i'll just keep on cooking this one for uh, i don't know like maybe 15 more minutes we'll put it i'll put it in one pan and speed spoon again all right so Actually, the jam, the langka jam is almost done. I've, I've actually put it back um, to cook a little bit more because sometimes the langka can have a lot of moisture. So um, if it's watery, I'll just grab a spoon. Yeah, so if it's watery, like this one, it's still a bit liquid. You can just like put it back um, to evaporate the liquid some more and it's um, just going to be um, sticky and, and gooey when it's done. But the fruit is um, softer now. Um, maybe I'll just put it back to cook a little bit more just to um, let the, all the water evaporate. So Candice, how is it going with your um, plan? Is it done? Do you want to? Oh, my plan's doing well. We've got six minutes to go. So I was just having a little check because it says it's got to be a little bit wobbly in the middle. You know what Candice likes? She loves a little bit of a wobble. So she's just like <laughs> lifting the lid away so she doesn't like melt her makeup off. And then I just get the getting close. They're probably about six more minutes away. They'll be definitely cooked. As we say, we cut that down a little bit by um, a few minutes because obviously I did them yesterday with the other set that I'll show you. And yeah. it said to do them for 40 minutes. And I just thought it was a little bit long. So always remember when you're doing something with your, your guided cooking, you can always alter things. So when it's saying like make it for four and you know, there's only two of us, remember deduct everything by half and then take 20% off of your cooking time. If all of a sudden you've got guests that turn up at your front door and they go, oh, we're staying for dinner. And you're like, oh God, I'll throw another chicken breast in there. And you've got another two people, just add 20% to your time of cooking. It's easy. It's not that hard. You can always get that funny little thing out. What's, um, it's got numbers on it. Um, oh God, what do you call it? Um, Abacus. No, not abacus. <laughs> Calculator. That's it. Yes. That's oh, you can tell how old oh, Candace is. She goes back to an abacus. Oh, oh dear. So you got four more and 40 minutes, four minutes and 45 seconds. And then she's cooked it, roasted. Oh. Awesome. Delicious. Mm. Sounds so good. So, um, yeah, I, I guess we'll go to Marcel because she has another um, dessert slash snack food that she needs to show us. So I'll just spotlight her back. Um, okay, let me try and do this first. There we go. Um, I'm still spinning feeders. Okay. Yeah, so... I, I, have, I need um, another thermomix to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely earn another one. <laughs> okay, I have um, a video of a pandesal, a bread recipe. Um, I can show that while your um, puchinta is steaming. So maybe okay, we'll um, do yeah. that. And I'll try first. to answer some of the questions in the chat. Yeah, all right. Let me see if I can find it first. 
Um, yeah, um, hang on, I'll just screen share. I just love technology, it's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've, I've done this one earlier um, because it takes a while for the bread um, to do it, but I hope this one works and we'll see. Can you see it um, now? Can you hear anything? Nothing yet. Oh, no. can you see the video? Um, I'm just, I thought I've screen share. Let me do that again. Uh, yikes, where did it go? When you screen share, you might actually need to click the share with sound to enhance the sound of your shared video. Mm -hmm. I have but to do that with my train. So discontinue share and do it again. Oh, no. Okay. And you um, might find that works. How do we do this? Um, advanced sharing options. Was that you helping us, Sam? Yes, it was. <laughs> 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 because I use my Zoom all the now time. I know, now I know what your voice There's sounds two little, like. Yeah. <laughs> There's two little click buttons oh, before this you share slide. your document. And it should say share yeah. screen plus share to optimize video clip or something. Oh, there you go. I found yeah. it. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> All right. Now we'll just have to find the file again. Okay. We'll do it again. I need a new pair of shoes. All right, so I'll just see if this one works. Again. Oh, it's not able to find it. That's annoying. Hmm. I'll try again. If it doesn't work, I'll just have to maybe send you a video, but I'll try one more time. Oh. 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 Sorry, girls, I have to get a new pair of shoes. Oh, what happened? The bottom popped off. Get a new one. It's time for... A lot of new pairs of shoes. I've got my steel skyscrapers on again. The most comfortable. I cannot get this to work. That's annoying. Sorry about that. Oh. I'll try one more time. Um, video. <laughs> Have you done your um? Put in that. Marcel, or you want to show it first? Ouch, hot. I think you're on mute. Ah. Um, I think I still have like six minutes to go. Okay. Now I cannot share anymore because when I open up the video, Can you see um, the video I'm trying to share? No, I think you're gonna hit your uh, um, share screen and then something to do with the op optimized uh, sound or Yeah, something. but I, I cannot find the application that I'm trying to... Um, What's the application oh, there you go. you've got? It's here and fresh. And oh, there you go, it's working. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah. All right. yay. Okay. Hello. So I'm going to make you how to make the pandesal. The pandesal is probably the most popular um, bread in the Philippines. It's kind of this um, soft, sweet um, bun or roll. And we usually have them for um, breakfast. 
because the bakeries uh, cook them very early in the morning and they're hot and fresh and very nice for, for breakfast. But we also have them for merienda or snacks. And it's usually eaten with fillings inside. So it can be sweet or savory or just plain. And um, some just like dunk it in hot coffee and that's their merienda. So um, yeah, but but the pandesal um, recipe, they don't have it in cookie dough. And I found out there's um, a few bread recipes in the Asian um, collection, bread collection that's very similar in taste and texture to the pandesal. It's just that you have to tweak um, a few of the steps towards the end to shape it into um, the pandesal that we know. There's a couple of recipes in cookie dough. So one is um, the Tanzong milk bread recipe, which is um, very nice. So it's meant to be a loaf, but um, you can shape it into um, pandesal. And the other one is um, the soft sweet buns that um, I'll, be, I'll be doing today. So let's get started. All right. So um, with the soft sweet buns, it's um, kind of like a simpler um, version. Uh, you have less ingredients than the tansong milk bread. So we'll start cooking. So grease a baking tin. We'll do that later. I'll skip that for now. So we need to put water, 300 grams. Uh, next. Yeast, 10 grams, dried yeast powder. I've pre-measured it, so I'll just put it there. Okay, 60 grams, caster sugar. Should be close enough. One gram less, that's hard. Next, we need 60 grams of salted butter. So I've pre-measured this one as well. And this is going to heat up. It's 37 degrees Celsius just to activate um, the yeast. So, um, all right. So we'll come back after two minutes and continue with the rest of the recipe. All right, so that's um, three more seconds left. Perfect. And then we just add the flour. What did I do? Take previous, all right, 400 grams high protein flour or bread flour. I'll just grab that one here. Right one. Perfect. And play for. And salt. That's one teaspoon. Start the kneading. This is gonna go for five minutes. So I've prepared my thermal mat. This um, is gonna proof for about an hour, I think. And um, the dough scraper. It's very good. This is actually from the mix shop. And I like how it's sharp in the edges and it's good for scraping. It's, yeah, I use this all the time in making bread. So that's four um, more minutes. I'll just <laughs> back later when it's done. Huh? Record it. And <laughs> all right, so that's almost done in three seconds. There you go. All right. We'll see. I find that the dough, um, when you use a thermal mix, it's actually very nice. Um, if you can see that, so um, soft 
very soft and it's still a bit warm. So that would be very nice for um, proofing the bread later on. So transfer dough into a pastry mat, wrap dough with pastry mat like a parcel and let proof for 50 minutes or until double inside. So that's not one hour at all. So probably 50 minutes. I find like if a dough is sticky like this, I can just um, tip the whole thing over and release the base. So the blade can just fall through and the rest of the dough would come down. But sometimes um, because the blade is sharp, when it comes down, if you're using a thermomat, it can pierce through your mat. So what I do is I use the cover just to catch um, the blade falling down when I drop the mat. So there, yep, still stop. I'll just put that there for a bit while I scrape off. All Very the sticky, isn't it? From the bowl. That's yeah. I like the scraper um very much. It's very flexible, so you're able to actually get all the dough from your bowl out. So just a little bit more easier than using a spatula or um something to get the dough from the bowl. And I'll just maybe just use my fingers to pick this out from the blade. Just be careful if you're doing this. You don't have to do this. And just, you know, just want to get all the last bits of dough. That's just me. Um, yeah. So just be careful when you're doing this because um, the blades can be really sharp, especially if they're new. All right, so I think that should be good enough. Put this aside. And this one. I will just um, wrap this for proofing. So I do it like this um, way. Doesn't matter really, as long as it's covered. Um, leave some room for when your dough rises. So I'll just leave it in there, come back after 15 minutes or until it's doubled in size, 15, 30 maybe. All right, see you soon. Okay, so this is doubled. I think probably more than double. So um, we'll continue. I'll just unwrap the parcel. My thermomix is turned off. It's been idle for more than 15 minutes. I'll just grab some flour so it's not very sticky. Yes, resume. So we're not going to follow. You can actually shape it into rolls, um, like what's on the recipe. But I'm just going to show you how um, we're going to do it if we'll shape it into pandesal rolls. Because for pandesal rolls, um, you'd need to cover it in like um, bread crumbs before you bake. So um, I'm using this kind of breadcrumb. So don't use the panko one, it won't work. Um, so we're going to roll this into a log and um, just cut it and roll it in um, the breadcrumbs like here. So I'll just, get, go, I'll just go and grab some flour and I'll be back in a sec. You can actually like roll it um, with a rolling pin. I think I'll just use my hand um, to make a log um, shape out of this one. So I'll just press it down 
to knock down all the gases from the dough. And then I'll just roll it into a lump. Oh, Ken is getting hungry now. Uh -huh. I'm not Are really you? very good at making bread. Um, I wasn't making bread before um, I had the Thermomix. So it's one of the things that's actually, um, I'm very glad I can do now. Especially that two minute meeting. Who wants to stand there going, it's like washing clothes, go. Can, so two minutes, can it's not a cocktail. Paper. To divide this into maybe 16 pieces. So same scraper, I'll use it to cut the dough as well. And just, let's see how many, maybe 16. So, yeah. All right. And then, um, I'm using this one. So this one's from the mix shop. And the tray um, and the liner, uh, the liner has actually, um, goes and fits in the tray like perfectly and they come in different sizes so um i'll be putting that here but before i do that you just have to roll it in the breadcrumbs first all right so that's one You put the flat side, you put it down um, with the sliced side, the flat side. So it's more like an oval shape like that. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll show it to you later when I'm done. I'll just cover this with cling wrap or you can also use the thermal mat to cover it um, if you like. So I'll cover this with cling wrap, um, let it proof for 30 to 45 minutes and then we'll come back when it's done. All right, so this is what it looks like after the second proofing. It's puffed up a bit. I have preheated my oven to 170 um, degrees and now it's ready to go into the oven. Ooh, so exciting. All right. So that needs to bake for about 15 to 20 minutes or until um, light golden brown. We'll keep an eye on this one. All right, and then come back for you when it's done. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. So this just came out of the oven. Oh, let me see. Let me just move it around so you can see. Oh, how good is that? Yum, yum. Delicious. It's there we go. Oh, they've grown really long. I love the smell of freshly baked bread. So good. All right. Uh, it's um some some people prefer it like really toasted. Um, they call it tostado. Um, so you can like let it stay for about one or two minutes more in the oven if that's you. Um, yeah. All right. I'll grab one of these. Hopefully it's not too hot. And just let you um, show you um, the texture once it's baked. So it's like that. And it's really soft. Um, if you can see that. I'll open and yeah, it's Ooh. really good. I feel like making one of these now with butter because it's awesome. Yeah, it's really soft and nice and hot, freshly baked from your oven. It's the best. Thank you. Ooh. Bye. All right. Yay!
that went well <laughs> i hope so um yes so we're on the towards the end of um the session now and we'll go back to marisel to show us her good chin back um yep let me do the um oh sorry you have one more <laughs> sorry i forgot Uh, Candace, Candace and Gisette's ready if you like. Oh, yeah, all right. Well, we look at look at your desserts. I'm just spotlighting in a bit. There you go. God, didn't those bread rolls look delicious? I could just imagine like a great big pot of cream cheese and like, oh, oh slathering yeah. on it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, nice bottle of red. Oh, Candace, and would coffee. In, Candace would be in heaven. So here's our little babies. Look at the oh, look, aren't they gorgeous? And oh. I, I wouldn't call them I wouldn't call them little, but they're just like great big monstrous creme brulees, but they're called Spanish friend or leche. So we've got all sorts of different ones. So these were the little ones I made yesterday. These are petite. So that was on that side, and this one was on this side. So <laughs> they're equal. So we popped one out. Look at this. Oh, look. Oh, oh it's yeah. like going to Granny's, isn't it, for, for lunch? Oh, it's just going to have a little taste test. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. mm. oh yummy. I wish I can go oh. there. Oh, this one's got the orange peel in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mm. Candace approved. So these little babies, now they're cooked, you let them rest for an hour. Don't touch them. Then you pop them in the fridge for at least six hours. Or overnight. And you just get your little knife, and it's lost a knife. It's not going to go kill anybody. And then you can <laughs> just go around the little edgy like that. We're not going to do too much because these haven't set yet. They're still warm. So you pop them out. And then when you pop them upside down on your plate, all that beautiful caramel, which would have set in the bowl that you saw at the very beginning, runs down the side. And oh, how delicious. And you throw it. A few little seasonal berries in there, a little bit of cheese, a couple of strawberries, and oh, hang on a little bit. Can just have a little bit more for her hips. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> God, yeah. Oh, oh God. Not only as good as a cocktail, but you know what Candace is like? She loves a cocktail. She hasn't made one. She's going to try and find one for the Philippines. But seeing as we look like we're going off to Malaysia or Singapore, <laughs> She might be going off to the Mandalay, so she's going to have to find a little cocktail from up there. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, Sounds love. good. <laughs> oh, Candice loves the cocktail. She's going to be a little That's sip. That's awesome. Over to you, girl. All right. We'll go back. That's awesome, Candice. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. We'll go back. Anytime. We'll, we'll go back to Marissa so she can show us the rest of her um, recipe. Okay, I'm back. So it's maiz con yellow, as um, similar to Fides' uh, um, earlier dish. So it's a sweet corn made of sweet corn. So I'm using the uh, um, I'm using the um, cream corn um, canned, and um, again it's sweet um, with uh, condensed milk, evaporated milk. Um, um, maybe I just want really to showcase with you guys the um, um, how easy to crush um, ice, uh, shave ice in the thermomix. So basically, let me just get my eyes. And I've uploaded the recipe in the recipe community, but I'm just missing the picture, but um, I will pop in the recipe um, or I will send it to Fides so that she can send it to you guys. So basically, I am using recipe um, my week um, crushed ice recipe in the um, cookie do thermomix. So start cooking and basically um, 
put 200 um, ice cubes, but I will just put around 500 so that I can just do one time. And the capacity of the bowl is 2.2. So I guess maybe a little will be fine. Okay, 500, I'll just put it in. Yep. <laughs> so He's five, making a Candice margarita with 500 grams of ice. <laughs> yep, next. Set in. It says eight seconds. Um, feed five. So I'm just going to tell, but honestly, it's even before eight seconds, it's all done. Okay. Finish. And if you looked at it, it's so nice, nicely crushed, fine and shaved ice. It's like snow, snow ice. And how we do it is basically, I've already prepared glass uh, with um, cream, cream core. And I will just layer it with the, um, with the eyes. And by the way, I already added sugar um, in my cream cone or condensed milk um, on my milk. So I, yep, a bit more. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit more. And more ice. And we have another one that's very popular, something that you have to try when you go to the Philippines is to call it halo halo, similar to ice kachang of Malaysia. And Vietnamese, I can't remember how they call it. It's using shaved ice as well. With lots of colors. Okay, there you go, and then I'm just gonna add um, a little bit more, just a topping, and uh, some milk. Yep, so it's done. It's another, um, just in time for summer, really. Um, we'll be definitely making a lot of this. Um, during uh, at summer time. Okay, I think we're almost done, Fides. Yep. So we should should we go around and yep. show everyone what we've made? Um, I'll just spotlight everyone. All right. So I'll go first. The Lanka jam is here. Can you see it? There you go. So that's that one. It would actually go very well with this um, as a filling for the um, bread. And it can also go well, um, it will also go well as a topping for um, the corn. So this is the corn rice pudding. It's, um, yeah, it's thick and creamy and yummy. So try that. It's recommended. And Candy said it's good for breakfast, lunch, dinner, any time of the day. <laughs> All right. So that's mine. We can go to Candy's next. If you still have some natural plant left. Um, okay. Well, Candice is just like hoeing in that last little bit. Oh, uh, oh God. That's so good. Oh. Oh. It's been such an honor working with you girls. Like just going around the world, it's just amazing. And I think I saw someone said they want to do a Singapore sling. So I think I think we're off to Malaysia and Singapore next. So we're gonna to have to work this one out, girls. No chickening out. <laughs> we're gonna to get together and we're gonna to work this out. We're off to another yes. country to get your passport stamped because like this little baby's going down to this hip, and this one's going down here. And I reckon these two are gonna go. 
somewhere around here. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's be very full. It's been an absolute pleasure with working with both of you. Oh, uh, thank you. And I can't wait to do it again because I think we're going to have loads and loads of fun because we're just going to be jet setting off. We're going to get yes. that passport stamped like, oh, God, I don't know what. We're going to get so much duty free that we're going to be able to touching it. No, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely we'll do that. We'll have another round of this one, something different. Oh, I think so too. That's oh, awesome. Fabulous. And thank you everyone for joining in. And oh, it's been fabulous. What's next? There's, okay. There's more food. Sense. There's more food. Yeah. Oh, look at those sandwiches. Oh, more food. Oh, so this is the, I mean, this is the chicken mayo. Um, so it's just really, uh, um, so chicken may mayonnaise, uh, steamed chicken, and salt and pepper, and then I just put some vegetables, lettuce, um, to add in. And then this is the cochinta, which is the rice, um, steamed rice cake, uh, very, very popular. So if you'll see, uh, if you'll be ever be attending a party, definitely there will be some rice, um, um, rice uh, cake, so, so gooey. <laughs> So it, that's the texture that you want. It's soft and chewy. Yep. And then we normally serve it with some uh, shredded coconut. But I normally don't add in just, you know, um, I will normally let the people uh, um, add in. Yeah. So that's, the, look at the color. So it's, this is the, the, basically, I would say the traditional. And um, I just added some flavor, which is the pandan and the ube. And this is the mais con yellow, really in time for summer. Um, really nice, Be very refreshing. Um, we also do halo halo, which is kind of like quite a bit of uh, like sweet banana on it. Um, some Asian desserts, yeah. Banana con yellow, I think. Yeah, they call it banana con yellow at the same time. Okay, all that's right. all about it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, both of you. Um, we hope to do it again sometime soon. And um, I think we just hit hour and a half. So, um, yeah, we'll let you go. And we'll send everyone the recording if you want to go back and watch um, some of it. And also the link to the recipes. Um, and some other information that you might want. Um, yeah, I guess that's all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. It was really great. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh, we got to do a Candace jiggle. Come on, girls. Oh, jiggle, yeah. jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Oh, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 Candace is always renowned for a jiggle. <laughs> We have a we have a term for you, Candice, in the Philippines. It's called bonga. It's like okay. literally translated as like fab. So that's oh. a Filipino word. Oh, so you're gonna say Candice is bonkers, but she already knows that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. It's been fabulous. I mean, it's so different doing something on a Saturday afternoon rather than doing it on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different, but it just keeps everybody on their toes. And you just never know where we're going to land up next. You just have to follow <laughs> our pages. And God knows, you know what? We could land up in the Antarctic. Oh, no. Oh, we what are we have? We'd have to cook seal, wouldn't we? Ice. We'll, we'll have a lot of ice. Um, oh, well, that, that'd be good for well, cocktails. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know about seal with ice. No, no. Penguin? Uh, no. No. Nah. I'll think um, of something, no. though. You know what Candice so, likes. Something. Like. something anyway. But thank All you, right. girls. It's been absolutely Fabulous. It's been an honour to be asked to join you. And I can't wait to do another one again. I think Candice going to do one next Friday, but I don't know what she's going to do yet. She'll think oh. of something. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Candice. Thanks, Marcel. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I have to stop recording.